I come from a very conservative Somali background. I was born in Kenya to Somali parents. My family fled the Somali Civil War. Um, we settled in the United States, specifically Minnesota, as refugees. I officially declared myself as an ex-Muslim, I think in ninth grade. As far as my sexuality goes, um, that was around the same time too, because I went to a, a suburban high school that didn't have any, I think I was the only Somali student, so I felt much more comfortable announcing that I'm gay. And so I started getting involved in LGBT groups. I started um, coming out to my peers and teachers. My family's like every average standard Somali family, very conservative um, religion and culture are part and parcel of Somali life. If they discover that their loved one is an atheist or that their loved one is gay, the first thing that they will do is try to hide it from the larger Somali community because this is a community that cares a lot about reputation. The most common way that Somalis deal with deviant behavior is called, we call it Dakan Ilis. Um, it translates to cultural return. And so if a parent notices that their, their daughter or their sons are straying away from religious and cultural norms, they will take them to usually grim parts of Africa and keep them there and make them undergo rigorous Islamic training, make them um, basically return back to the culture because you're surrounded in a community that's all Somali um, and therefore they have a much easier time policing your behavior as opposed to if you're in the United States um, and you felt that your brother like was threatening you for like wearing pants or for not wearing the hijab, you could automatically report that to the police and get some sort of help. But when you're in Kenya and you're in an area that is predominantly Somali, you're basically trapped. They can make you do whatever they want you to do. This uh, May, I left to Kenya with my mother and some other family members. Um, they told me that I would be vacationing there for just three months and that I would be returning in time for my fall semester. And they actually showed me an itinerary that indicated that I would be returning specifically like August 30th, right before my school starts. And so I went along and when I arrived in Kenya that night, we booked a hotel and my mother told me that I will be staying in a separate room all by myself. So the next morning, my mother um, came into my hotel room and she asked me, um, she said, Mahad, why, did you, why do you think I separated you from everyone else? And I told her that I'm not sure why she did that. And she said that a, a non-Muslim cannot be in the same room as a Muslim and that it's haram. And then I was like, what are you talking about? And she pulled out two articles that I had written um, one talked about me being gay and the other was about my apostasy and she said that she could not tolerate this anymore and that this was her last ditch attempt at trying to reform me and that she had no other option. She exhausted all of her options in Minnesota. She tried to put me to different madrasas. She tried to get various religious clerks to talk to me about my personal beliefs. None of that obviously worked. And she said that you are going to be staying here under the leadership of a few religious clerics who will lead you back to the faith in her own words. And um, this is obviously not something I'm going to settle for because I've heard many horror stories of students being locked up in a facility where they're beat to death, where they're basically tortured, where they are um, in a very like horrible situation and I did not want to put myself in that situation and I reached out to a few members of ex-Muslims of North America who basically organized a taxi for me to escape that night to the U.S. Embassy um, and once I arrived at the U.S. Embassy um, I was working with the uh, general consul who was assisting me and he helped me get back to the United States. I feel extremely betrayed. I feel very upset especially at my mother, because like I mentioned before, I had hope in her. I felt very angry at myself um, for having consented to coming to Africa, um, because I, I really did not foresee this, actually. I did not foresee this c c happening whatsoever. Um, and I said to myself, like, damn, they got you. They really, really got you. If they went as far as forging an itinerary, there's absolutely nothing that they won't do to try to get you back onto the religion. I want to speak out about my experience because I want my family to know that no matter how much they've tried to silence me, that it is not going to work. I'm not trying to like disrespect them or anything. Like I appreciate them, I still love them, and I still care for them despite all of that has happened. But I want to be openly gay, and I want to be openly ex-Muslim, and that there's absolutely nothing that they can do about that.